Yeah. What's up, what's up, what's up? Yeah. Here we go. Get it ready, man, for show love to yo. <laughs> I'm so cool, I went to Africa. Back at school, they were laughing at us. Now what's cool to be black as fuck. Now what's cool to be from yeah. Africa, huh? Yeah. Went yeah. Africa. Went to Ghana, now we're Shout out to Keisha, man. So cool to went to Africa. Ghana. Make sure you go check that out on Spotify right now. I'm so cool, I went to Africa. Back at school, they were laughing at us. Tell the truth. Wait for people cool. to come through. Cool. cool to be black as fuck. Now what's cool to be from Africa. Yeah. Now what's cool to be from Africa, huh? Went to Ghana, now I'm acting. Big up everyone. Show love to yo. With special guest Queen Vicetti, Anique Jordan. Yeah. Big vibes, man. Big vibes. Big tune, yo. Y'all haven't heard this, man. Y'all sleeping, y'all snoozing. Hey. Went to Ghana, now I'm acting up. Went to Ghana, now I'm acting up. It's so cool to be Yeah, yeah. Big up to everyone coming through. You already know what it is. Storm from Africa is the movement. Jeez. Hey, hey. Tech time, yo. Okay, okay. Big up, big up. Got the weekly read up. Everything looking live. Kind of slanted, though. I got to, I gotta like, turn my head like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my phone is slanted. I have it on the stand. Okay, okay. I don't know if you can um, kind of like, is there another way you can like position the phone or something? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Say a word. All right, all right. Wait, I'll have to, yeah, I'll try. New vibes, new vibes, man. But it's all good. We got our peoples coming through, man. Big up to everyone coming through. I have to hold oh, it. If I'm oh, you have to hold it like that. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. Jeez, jeez. Yes, yes. Big up, big up, Anique. You got that good sun coming through, man. Short yeah. <laughs> <laughs> while, I'm sure. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. I got nothing but shade on my on my area, man. I get like a little window of some sunshine, and then that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> that downtown life, man. But how are you doing, though? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm here in Scarborough actually at my mom's house for a little while, for the next two months or so. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. That's what's up, man. Well, thank you for being here, you know. So um, big up to everyone who's came, coming through. This is the uh, Show Love T.O. event, man. Big up to the City of Toronto. Big up to uh, the Ontario Arts Council for supporting us. And, you know, really it's about us creating spaces for us to, to connect and build. You know, a lot of things have happened over the pandemic and social distancing and isolations and whatnot, even though now we're coming back more into, you know, some more of a connected vibe. You know, we really want to create spaces for us to, like, share, to, to heal, to, um, you know, share ways of how we've been able to, like, you know, cope and process. And, and you know, literacy has been, like, a really big way for us to... Um, to, to build, you know, and, and to get motivated and, and connected and whatnot. So we're going to get into some of those things. But um, for those who don't know, um, Stone from Africa, we are a Black arts education organization here in Toronto. We focus on cultural and historical awareness of Africa and the African diaspora. And we do quite a bit of uh, work with, uh, with youth, focusing on, you know, empowerment, uh, identity, knowledge of self. Uh, we work within schools, work within community, and we're definitely passionate about everyone finding their purpose, you know, and the arts is a great way of finding that. So that's why we have our peoples here who are going to share some of their insights, their expertise, and all this greatness. Um, I actually want to introduce, before we get into Anika, I know Quentin uh, should be joining us uh, real soon. Um, we have... Um, we have Ratani, you know, who's um, one of our um, SFA youth, SFA young people who's part of the uh, Black Youth Collaborative. You know, I'm um, a young person. I remember the first time um, I connected with her, you know, was through like her own poetry and her own voice and, and being expressive and, you know, being un unapologetic. You know, I was really amazed by, by her, her use of voice. So um, before we get started, uh, Ratani, I guess you can kind of introduce yourself and, you know what I mean? Just... Kind of set off a little vibe, yes. a little ting. Yes, thank you, Logic. Um, hope everybody that joined us today um, this afternoon is blessed um, and, you know, like in good spirits. Um, so just a quick introduction to myself. As Logic said, um, 
we met through poetry. Um, that was like the first thing I kind of like brought up. Um, and uh, you know, we kind of but um, I've been recently working with FSA um, on a youth community, a community project. So um, we're working with a, a lot of different youth um, to strengthen the education system. Um, so that's really our main focus with other partners. So yeah, that's really what I've been doing um, and kind of still writing poetry here and there. Um, and today I'm just gonna start up start us off by um, performing a little piece that I wrote called Rise. And it's all about resilience and, you know, kind of getting through the tough times and believing in, your, in yourself. So the here praise. Yes. It's funny how I came, with, came up with this epiphany. Every step I take, I lose another piece of me, trying to breathe light into this world that only takes for me. Flame so bright, I wish I could outshine this darkness that's around me. Every time I rise, I fall, determined to do better. I keep rising, keep falling, keep rising, keep falling. The tension is tearing me apart. I don't know if I have that much to give. But what's life worth living if I can't be great? If I don't allow my light to shine, I'm no better than the force is trying to tear me apart. Mm -hmm. I will not let them see me, give them the satisfaction of seeing me down so I will continue to rise. I will get back up when I fall. See, the light inside of me, I will use it to the best of my ability. With the last breath inside of me, I will shine so bright, I will speak so loud, so that my voice transcends to the next generation. I will take a stance when it's hard, even when it's hard, and I, will, and I will get back up when I fall, and I will make magic out of nothing. Mm. Hey! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Yeah. How long have you been writing? Um, not too long. I, I think I really kind of started writing poems in 2017. That's when I really wrote um, my first poem, um, I would say. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Indeed, man. Powerful, powerful stuff, man. And that's that's what's up, though. Um, but yeah, like I know, like um, you know, you got like the the bios ready to go, so um, I guess we can just yes. get right into it, man. Let the people know who we have on the call, man. Like we're we're in the presence. Yes, of greatness. yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so, um, so I'm just gonna quickly introduce um, Anik Jordan. So Anik Jordan is an artist, a writer, and a curator who looks to answer the question of possibility in everything that she creates. As an artist, um, Jordan works in photography, sculpture, and performance, often employing the theory of ontology and challenging historical or um, dominant narratives in creating um, what she calls uh, impossible images. Jordan has uh, lectured on the art, artistic, artistic and community-engaged um, cultural practices as of 2017. Um, as a 2017 Canadian um, seminar speaker at Harvard University and in numerous institutions across the Americas. Um, so yeah, that was a lot to consume. Um, so just before we go into Quentin's bio, um, I know we mentioned hauntology. Um, just for like um, the few of the viewers that are here and even myself, um, it's kind of like the first time coming across that word. So I don't know if you want to share a bit more about um, what that is. Um, hauntology. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Much love. And so I feel so blessed to be here. I've, you know, grown up with logics, doing this thing for years and years and years and years in the community and always loved and feeling so blessed to be in the presence of Q and young poets and artists who are doing so many amazing things for our community. So thank you for having us here. Um, and thank you for the introduction. So I'll just really quickly, before you introduce Q, give you like the lowdown on hauntology and the ways I understand it. It's not an idea that I invented. It's one that I have co-opted and been using to try to understand the ways that Black people have been able to exist in so many multifaceted ways in the world, in spite of the fact that our histories have been interrupted so many times. And so um, hauntology, you know, you think about the root word of it, which is haunting to be haunted. And so oftentimes people think about the things that haunt us as very negative things, as memories of, of slavery, of memories of, or histories of, uh, of violence for black people. 
But for me, I think about it as housing both that and then also these like survival strategies that taught us how to survive in spite of all those things that were happening. The ways that we share culture, the ways that we encode the things that we do, our gestures, our music, our rhythms, all these things are also nestled within that that thing that haunts us. And so for me in a lot of my work and, and I think in the work also I feel like that Q does, we sort of think like disregard time in many ways right and think across time in so many ways because what's in the future came from the past what's in the present informs both and so hauntology is a way of disregarding those temporalities and sort of meshing them to say that we you know we are we are always dealing with all times so that's mm. that's how i think about it Jeez. yes thank you so much <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, so Quentin um, was the winner of the Governor General Award in 2010 um, and the creator of the 2020 um, jo Josiah um, Glover uh, Memorial, Toronto's first um, permanent, um, okay, some something over my words, guys. Um, so Toronto's first um, uh, permanent um, Mo a monument of a person of African descent. Quentin Brissetti is an award-winning multidisciplinary visual guru and a very and ever-growing illustrator. Um, could you just take over, please, Logic, um, for that bio? Because I don't know, like, I don't really want to mess it up. Like, you deserve all of this. And I'm kind of like stumbling over my words, and you know what I mean? No, you're doing a so, great job. You're doing say. a great job. <laughs> I'll just say, kinda... I'll just say, keep it short and sweet. You know what I mean? You said, you okay. said all the beautiful things already. All right. Peace. All right. Love. Definitely. Don't worry. Don't worry appreciate, I appreciate you uh, introducing us for sure. You're welcome. <laughs> amazing. And amazing. that poem yeah. of yours is amazing. <laughs> Thank definitely, you definitely. so much. No doubt. Definitely we appreciate it. Cool, man. So, I mean, we can just get right into like, you know, some of these questions, you know, um, you know, and one of the first questions that, that we had is, is like, why is art important to you? So either one of you can just, you know, set it off and just jump into it, you know, and what, why is it important to you? <laughs> Who's going to go for it? Heads or tails? <laughs> I'll let my hero, I'll let my hero and Nick go first. No, 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 that's not how this works. <laughs> Um, uh, well, um, in, a, in a simple in a simple answer uh art's important to me because it gave me a direction when i had no direction it saved my life on multiple occasions um and uh and I, it's literally the reason why i'm here you know um and the reason why i'm still here you know uh i've had many close death encounters and I've lost many friends along the way, and it's because of art that has allowed me to stay in tune with the ancestors and allow myself to be protected um, in ways that other people may not have been, and it has allowed me to stay aligned with uh, with with the healing that that the that the our community needs, you know, and, and that uh, a lot of young black men like myself need. So um, that's 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 what art is for me. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, like, um, I think for me, it's like a portal. Like, it's the only way that I can, um, like, carve out a space to answer or ask a question that can't be asked or answered in any other way. So it's like this secret thing, you know, that you can do and that you're tasked to do. So I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like. Like you said, like I feel like it's this magical, really important thing, um, in the romantic sense, but you know, in the practical sense, it also keeps me, it keeps me alive, keeps me going. So, yeah, I think, yeah, everything you just said. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I agree with that as well. I know, like for art, for me, you know, is um, you know, connects with identity, voice, therapy, like I, like what everybody mentioned, like I, I wouldn't be here with, without it, like they, without art you know, like Stone from Africa wouldn't exist the way how it is. Like I wouldn't be doing things and has definitely given me a direction, purpose. Um, yeah, all, all of that stuff, you know, it's um, spirituality, you know, all of those different, you know, connections and whatnot. 
Uh, I'm curious to know, like Brittany, like how, how does um art you know connect with you? Cause I know you're an artist and you express so. Um, I'm a very emotional person. Um, so I think you know art means to me, or like how I see my art, is just really expressing my feelings. You know, like I'll, I'll see a situation, and I'll sit down and I'll write about it. Or when I have a question about something, and you know, I'm like, okay, do people have these same questions as well, or, or whatever? And I'll just sit and I'll write about um, my thoughts and just all these things that you know come into my mind. Um, and as Quentin said, I think art. Um, sometimes you need like an outlet so i think art is just like a, a really great and positive outlet to just go into um and you know you always find something new whenever you go and write something you know you might think about one topic and then as soon as you start writing another idea pops up so i think that's really what art is to me mm -hmm. okay man that's peace man shout out to everybody in the chat man I see some some ogs man shout out to frankie Payne, y'all see him coming through peace, some peace. you know what i'm saying like yo all, all the people that might see lots of 100s and, you know, hearts and I don't know if it's a praying hands or if it's a, a high five. I'm like, <laughs> no, it's a no, no. <laughs> but either way, it's all love. You know, maybe big up to everybody. Um, I don't know, Brittany, if you got like the, the next question handy. You got that? Yes, so before, we, question, before we jump to the next question, though, I just want to yeah. echo off of something that Anik said um, that I was just reminded of, like with art being a portal. Um, mm. Uh, someone said that art is also a protective ritual. And uh, for me, when I think of a portal, I think of a ritual. Like, you can't just boop, open a portal. Like, there has to be a process to open that portal. And uh, one of the beautiful things about art is that, like, there's so many art forms within our lineage and within our heritage that has protected us to be here where we are today, you know? Um, I think about my grandma, you know what I mean, who, for her... The way she prays is an art form, like, you know what I mean? Like, her praying is an art form. Like, it's like half dance, half song, like, you know what I mean? Like, and it's a ritual, She, because she's, she's, she's calling on the spirit. She's calling on the ancestors. She's opening portals. She's going to the future, back, you know what I mean? And, and forward, you know what I mean? All in that moment, you know what I mean? She's dragging Jesus of the cross to, to, to you know what I mean? Act on, act on her behalf, like, you know what I mean? Real talks, like, you know what I mean? So, um... So when she said it's a portal, like I thought about all the different art forms and all the different art protective rituals that have uh, allowed us to uh, transcend any type of uh, moment and circumstances that we were in, you know? Mm. So I just want to add that sentiment. Mm -hmm. Yo, that was, that was a beautiful interpretation, man. Like I really felt that, you know, everything you said really resonated. Cause when I think of like when my mom starts getting in her prayer warrior mode, man, it's like, it really is like summons in this energy and, it really is a portal, you know, it really is, you know, and, and it's powerful, man, powerful. So that, that was beautiful. Appreciate that. You have to thank, you have to be grateful for, you know, those praying like parents and those praying grandmas, Come you know, when they, when they get around to it, they mean business, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's definitely something that's important as well. Um, but yeah, going on to the next question, I know we've been in quarantine, COVID's been around for a while. Um, so during quarantine, like what um, were some art inspirations um, that you guys had? Like how did art, art inspire you during quarantine? Um, well, you know, this year was like, yeah, full of COVID, but also there was a lot happening with BLM and um, with uh, like a type of global awakening to the conditions of many people, many black folks and folks of color, indigenous folks. So um, I, quarantine really hushed my ability to create, I found. Like I was just um, kind of beaten down by, uh, especially the early days of COVID, like you exhausted and scared, mm -hmm. um, like kind of just like paralyzed in all of that, you know, from from like the unknowns. So it didn't inspire anything. I didn't, it didn't feel like how people, you know, were like, oh, this is an opportunity to like be productive. And I was like, mm, it's a global pandemic. Like, why are we talking about productivity right now? Like, you know, and so that's not what inspired things. But as um, after the murder of George Floyd and, um, you know, the, the name calling of countless other black folks who have been murdered and like, and who have died violently in many ways, right, over the years, because like, that sort of, um, global reckoning came to the forefront. That is what uh, 
pushed me towards creating, I would say. Um, but even then, some of that was like, you know, the, the work that came out of it is really more cathartic than anything. Like it was for me um, more so than, uh, you know, for like the public, like it was for me to be able to like cope and like find ways forward. So um, yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't, I don't know if it's inspiration or if it's more of like um, sustenance and like finding ways to just like hold yourself down. Yeah. Definitely, because we've seen a lot of mental illnesses, people um, being more open about, you know, mental illnesses and stuff during COVID. Um, it's been wild. So definitely finding a way to cope through art, whether, you know, I mean, just like to be mellow. So that's really it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about yourself, um, Q? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the the pandemic, this whole thing, mod, okay. mod, 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 but like, what it inspired me to do because it forced me to be still, you know what I mean? If y'all know, like, your cues everywhere, like, boom, 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 like <laughs> doing, like, so many events, like, traveling here and there, you know, so it really forced me to slow down. Um, I moved back to Toronto from Montreal, so that was a huge change. Mm -hmm. But it, it forced, it inspired me to be more intentional with my healing and the healing that I'm creating and the healing spaces I'm creating for others, you know, um, and protecting mm -hmm. that peace, you know? Mm. And and uh, and being more confident in that piece, you know. Mm. Um, one of the things that really really came up for for me and my partner, what uh, which was a, which was a huge download message from the ancestors, was rest is a revolutionary act. You Ooh. know, because our ancestors never had that. You know, I mean, our, ne our ancestors never had that opportunity to rest. Mm. My parents never had that opportunity to rest. You know what I mean? Mm. And so, like, just being still was a huge thing for me. I, I like in school, I, I was told I had ADD, whatever, and blah blah blah, and all these things. You know what I mean? So, naturally, I'm hype. I, I have beer energy. You know, I'm jumping around. Da -da 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 -da, you know? And mm. so, but I realized it wasn't it wasn't a disorder. It wasn't a, a, an issue. It's just like I had to learn how to channel that, you know what I mean? So really channeling that helped me to heal so many things within myself, heal things within my family, repair relationships and all these different things, but then learn how to offer that to others, you know, and, and all the fruits of the labor that you're seeing that I'm putting out now is because of that, you know, is mm -hmm. because now I'm tapping into a deeper space where I'm coming from uh, not responding to my traumas, but from a healed um, response of knowing how to deal with the traumas differently, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I can be okay and meditate and be still while my mind is active, you know? And, and, and that's a, a beautiful thing that, I, that keeps me uh, in a creative space right now and, and keeps, me, um, encourage, uh, keeps me encouraged and, and, and courageous enough to continue to uh, mm -hmm. move forward despite the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Extreme powerful, man, powerful, man. Like, Yo, <laughs> you know, it, when, when I think about like me and, you know, just like, you know, our mental health and just like, you know, that the plan pandemic, as, as Q mentioned, um, <laughs> for me, like things just kind of like accelerated, actually, like I felt like the need to really be more present in my like, you know, authentic being, like really expressing how, how I'm feeling, like what's going on in my head and, and just like kind of putting it out there and inviting conversations um, to take place. So. I started doing like a lot of different podcasts, you know, like doing all kinds of lives that like I wouldn't have been doing from before. So it, it, it was interesting. And I think that was just my way of like coping and healing and just being like, yo, is anybody else feeling a certain way? Let me just invite y'all into the conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and that has been been pretty cool, you know? Um, so we do stuff like on, on Mondays um, on, on our IG channel here with, with, with youth. And, you know, we call it like, like you, you good fam, you know? So we really want mm -hmm. to just kind of extend this, you know, um, virtual space to like kind of check in. You know, mm -hmm. and um, and so far it's been um been been pretty cool, and just you know letting people know that that they're they're not alone, and and you know we 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 cope however we need to. So um, it's yeah. interesting all the different perspectives, you know. Um, but I do like what what you mentioned, Q, about about rest. Like that is something I've been you know really like present to, and and me being raised like like a seven day Adventist, you know, like Christian or whatever, and having the Sabbath. Like I'm really becoming present to that. I'm like yo, like. They knew some things still, man, you know, to have a day of rest to just unplug and really just center yourself, you know? So I'm becoming like really present to that. Mm -hmm. um, so 
keeping it moving. Um, next question is, um, so let's talk about like the, the, the text, like the books that y'all chose, man. So those who registered early, we know where we're blessed with some, some real gems. You know what I mean? I'm just going to read off some, some, some of the titles, man. A, a, a Map to, to the Door with No Return by Dion Brand. Uh, Parables of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. Sisters of the Yam, Black Woman and Self-Recovery um, re, re, self by Bell Hooks. And Between the World and Me by Ta Nisi Coates. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, mm -hmm. But yo, these are like some like powerful, powerful books. Um, how does these yeah. books... Sorry? No, just even by the title, yeah. like, you know, it's sending a message. Like, you can, like, imagine the story that it's telling just by the title. It's, like, so powerful. So, you know what I mean? Imagine the words. So, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, when we talk about, like, summons and energy, bringing it down, like, rituals. Like, like I feel like, you know, I to be honest, I haven't read these books, but I'm going to. And it, it, I feel like each book is a portal in itself. You know, mm -hmm. so that being said, um, maybe y'all can like speak to like why these um, books were, were selected and, and what they mean to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> y'all do we do like rock, paper, scissors? Like what up? <laughs> I'm frozen. One of them. Um, oh, um, uh, the bell hooks. Um, Sisters of the Yam, Black Woman and Self Recovery. Um, that was a book I can't even remember to be honest when I first started reading that book. I read it over and over so many times and I purchased it so many times. And the actually the last time I purchased it, I wrote in it, I was like, Anique, this book belongs to you. Do not give it away. <laughs> and I just mailed it to like this person the other day. So I mean to me, and, you know, we spoke about this before, but, like, to me, I see books as a type of medicine. And, like, so my bookshelf is, like, a medicine, like, cabinet. It's it's one and the same to me. And I've always sort of, uh, like, taken my books the way you would, like, you know, take something that you need to heal yourself, right? Like, so I'll go to my, my bookshelf and, like, what is it that I actually need? Who do I need to speak to? What sort of words do I need to, like, spend some time with? And I'll pick out, like, a a cocktail <laughs> of books, right? That sort of feeds that moment. And Sisters of the Yam is almost always in there because it, for me, it, you know, it's, Bell Hooks always writes about black women, black families um, and like spaces of recovery. But that particular book is like, every chapter is dealing with something that's so specific, that's so uh, like nourishing, I think particularly to black women. So, I, and, and when we thought about this project, you know, through our conversations, a lot of it revolved around finding spaces of healing. And for me, language had always been one of the things that like, um, that stumped me, not being able to say what I wanted to say, or not being able to find the words to articulate it, or feeling something and not knowing how to like voice it, that those things always stumped me. And so I, um, for me, it became really important to find ways that we can lend some of that language, particularly to young people who right now, you know, are in, are in so much dire need of like spaces of healing, of love, of reflection, of like being able to speak their own words. And so for me, like, you know, that, that collection of, of books that we've, that we've come up with is sort of like that gift to say, you know, here are the things that we've learned, like this can, this can offer you something. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's sort of like what I'm thinking. And I see my best friend just joined Hi, Lazio. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Q. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I forgot the question because I was just like busy snapping away at what you to say. <laughs> so, nah, the question was just um, talking about the book selection and, and why mm -hmm. you guys chose it, you know, how does that speak to you? Yeah, I don't, I don't feel like we chose any like one particular book because we kind of like uh, mutually agreed upon the books. Mm -hmm. uh, but like Sister at the Yam is a huge book for me. My big sister put me onto that book. Uh, shout out to Amanda Pierce. And uh, it was one of those things where it's like, I have to hold a seat and humble myself. Like, you know what I mean? I have to be like, yo, man. You know, because it, it made, it forced me to start learning about intersectionality, you know? And, and it, it allowed me to 
really understand Afrofuturism for what it's meant to be. You know, Afrofuturism is about the feminine energy because there is no creativity, there is no creation, there is no future without the female, right? Mm. Without with the black without the black woman, right? And mm. so, you know, Afrofuturism is a feminist space, is a feminist praxis, and so understanding how sexism and racism intersectionally affects black women and the importance for self-recovery for black women and allowing that space to happen for them. It, it, like for me, I didn't understand the importance of that until I got put onto this book, you know, and then it helped me to understand everything else and how everything else unfolded, you know, and this idea of change, you know, uh, you know, which is what the parable of the soul is about. And, you know, black women is all about change. You know what I mean? Black women is all about change in society to become better. So it's like, it's, it's, all the books kind of like echo and, and coincide with one another, you know, and, and they mm-hmm. and they complement one another because even with Nancy Coates, even though he's speaking to his son, he's still coming at it from from a feminist space, you know, and he's still coming at it from from a space of like humbling himself and, and learning how to be a better father, better husband, better mm-hmm. son, you know, et cetera, et cetera, as a reflection of his partner, you know. Um, a lot of that book uh, that he wrote, a lot of it was in conversation with his wife and with his partner in order to make that 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 uh tribute and contributions to his child you know so um yeah all, all like yeah choosing these books was just like recognizing that we're in a time and space where we need to amplify black women's voices we need to amplify queer and trans voices you know because mm-hmm. those are the voices of change those are the people who are affected the most mm-hmm. in terms of what's happening in society you know so everything all i would like to say on my behalf like the books that I agreed upon are just a reflecting a reflection of what we what I felt like in my spirit, what we need mm-hmm. in this time, you know? We need change within our community. We need to amplify these voices. We need to find self recovery, self reconciliation. Uh, one of the things that uh Bell Hook said was heal, healing inner wounds makes reconciliation possible. You know? Mm-hmm. And uh right mm-hmm. now we're seeing whoa, whoa, I think you gotta say that again, man. One, one, one more time, one more time, yeah, one more time. <laughs> Healing inner wounds makes reconciliation possible. And so uh, just to say, you know, not to even like try to summarize or even like paraphrase her words, but like right now we're in a moment of calling for reconciliation on so many levels for indigenous folks, for the black community, et cetera, et cetera, you know, for, for you know, the years of atrocities and trauma. And I think um, these four books really allows all these things to be coming to our forefront in terms of our consciousness and, and the a map, you know, a map towards uh, moving forward and not going backwards, you know, as we say, mm-hmm. Jamaican culture, forward, never backwards, never. So uh, the door of no return right now is is recognizing that we can't go back to a place of trauma and uh, a place of where we are continue, continue to be oppressed without uh, reconciliation. Mm-hmm. Mm, wow. Powerful, powerful, yo. Mm. All right. So, um, well, in, in the meantime, before we get on to like the, the next um, uh, questions, um, I don't know if some of our, our participants, people, you know, who's in the chat, like, you know, I see a lot, a lot of love, man, a lot of uh, 100s and high fives. Um, if you have any, you know, questions or comments um, for our, our guests here, um, please, um, you know, add them in the comments and we can, you know, hopefully be able to, uh, you know, give space for that. So, you know, big up to everyone. Man, see a lot, lots of love and lots of fam coming through. Tuning in, getting the knowledge, man. Spreading the word. I love it. Britannic. Yeah, is, that, is that a lot real of, light? Anik, is that real a light lot. coming on you? Like, it's always real light, Q. It's, 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 it's always slow. <laughs> I just sorry. I just I had an artist moment. I had an artist moment. Sorry. I just love the glow on your skin right now. Yes. <laughs> Yo, yeah. vibes, yo. Just like the heavens open up, you feel me? Just something. Yo, because so it's cloudy over here, so I'm like, that's what, what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Imagine right beside the window, and she's getting the sun. Yo, the heavens <laughs> just open up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, as he was saying back to, before I go into go into the question, as he was saying, like, um, you gotta you gotta heal before you can move on because a lot of people are trying to take the next step, but they didn't address the traumas in their past. They didn't uh, address everything. So you have you you have to do that before you can move on, and that's serious. You know what I mean? With everything in life. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, our next question is um. um so our next question is, um, as an artist, 
what tool, um, what are the tools you need, um, and what are the tools and resources you need um, to affirm your expression and growth as a per as a person, or even um, just your self advocacy. What are the tools that we need? Yeah, so the tools and resources that you you need to affirm um, yourself, your growth, and self advocacy. Mm. Oh. I think you know, art is always, you know, having a voice. So I think that's a good place to start. <laughs> um, having a voice and, you know, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like to foster that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really good question because for me, I always, like, I can easily get into, um, you know, dealing with, like, depression, anxiety, and, like, the, that's, like, paralysis that's just, like, uh, endlessly sort of trying to, like, come into my life. And I always forget about the tools that we have at our disposal. Mm. One specifically is music. Like, I often forget that music is there and how incredibly important, powerful music is. And, like, to marvel at, at this thing that is music, that is rhythm, right? So, like, I think I would just, like, leave it at that because there, we have so much at our, at our disposal that's available to us, and I think... Oftentimes we just skip it, we just forget it, and it's oftentimes just really hard to, to pull out when we need it the most, you know? So, like, creating those rituals and those practices where we can identify and know what we have available to us so we can source it when we need it the most. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Fire, fire. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question because for me, like, I've never sought to hear, I never sought to have my voice heard. Like, that's never been ever my intentions. Like, I never created artwork to be seen, never created, you know, a poem to be heard. But it's, it's, it's me recognizing that, like, I'm a vessel, you know what I mean? I'm, a, I'm an instrument, you know? And so uh, recognizing that, like, you know, the ancestors work through me. So it's like, even though I may not have that intention, the ancestors have a whole other plan that, I, that, is, that con continues to be revealed, you know? And so... For me, all I need is water. You know what I mean? All I need is substance to stay alive. Um, I remember uh, making one of my most uh, breakthrough poems uh, when I was arrested when I was 16. I was in a jail cell and I had nothing. I had no pen. I had no paper. And all I had to do, all I had was my, my imagination, you know? Mm. And, uh, and, I, and I literally visualized the entire short film of what that, what that poem would be. Like I saw it like on the walls, looking in the wall. I was in this dark room, looking on the wall. I, I felt the blood bleeding, like dripping, and and I and I was visualizing the entire poem. Never wrote it down for like a good ten years, and uh, and then it got turned into a film, exactly how I saw it in the jail cell, you know. And so, um, so that all that to say, like you know, Jay Z said, "Trap my body, but you know, you can't lock my mind," you know. And so, um, but more, even more, like you know, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, contain the spirit. And so for me, as long as I continue to listen to my ancestors, listen to uh, stay in alignment, um, and you know, stay stay in a place of integrity. I don't I don't really mm. need anything, but that's not to say I don't want anything, you know. And so mm. that's a whole different thing, you know. Um, mm. So in terms of the things I may want to continue to create is of course electricity, you know. <laughs> and, uh, okay. I'm a digital artist, you know, uh, internet, you know, and 100% uh, and, uh, connection to my community, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But if I can't have any of that, I just need substance to stay alive. Mm. Man, yo, that's, that's powerful, man. Because even that, and I'm thinking about the question myself and, you know, like the resources that, you know, I would need for, you know, expression and growth, definitely community. You know, um, like a lot of me like doing like youth work like grounds me and like keeps me tapped in and and reminds me of myself when you know sometimes we grow and go in different places we forget certain things you know and and the youth i'm um, always remind me of that and and that definitely keeps me grounded like you know 100. um you mentioned like integrity um integrity with myself first and foremost you know because that's where everything begins so i'm always you know taking inventory checking to see like how do i feel in this circumstance or like am i being self-expressed like how can i you know, um, express myself, even if it's, you know, um, not like desirable for, for others, you know, but mm -hmm. it's my truth. And, and I've learned that 
that's like the best place to, to, to be, you know, as, as uncomfortable as it may be at times, you know, that's um, what, what I need and, and what I always remind myself, you know, and I like what Anique mentioned about music. That's something that I always like forget, like, you know, it's like when I'm stuck mm -hmm. in a space, like there's always a song or something that can like bring me back to a place that maybe can articulate my emotions that I'm experiencing at that time. Or maybe, you know, some, I, I found myself when I'm going through like, a dark space i go back to like songs that I, I i heard in my childhood that like my moms would play you know what i mean so like them the whitney houston's or sos band and you know what i mean some of those like throwback joints they just bring me back to this this place of like of comfort of like security of um you know all of that you know so it's a really great great reminder so so thank you for that yeah and, uh, and i would also um i think this question is really like loaded um, to be honest, like you know, you, there's no really um, correct way to answer it. Um, but I definitely agree with music. Throughout the pandemic, I've been listening to music nonstop, especially um, gospel music, because you have to watch what you can see. You know, what I mean, like you have to watch what you listen to. Same like how you watch what um, who you keep around you, you know, or what you eat. So I think it's the same that goes when it comes to music and, and substance in my life. So I started listening to some gospel, you know and more like mellow songs, you know, nothing too violent, nothing too harsh. Um, again, especially in um, the pandemic where we saw a lot of violence, where we saw a lot of stuff, a lot of trauma. So, you know, kind of keeping it um, in a safe space. And I think um, going back to Anik's point and Logic um, kind of touched on that. And he said, listening to music um, from his childhood. And we talked about, you know, um, our, you know, kind of being a, a window, a door to um, going back to different places and, and taking you, um, you know, to different ro worlds. So I think, you know, that's something that's really uh, instrumental. Mm. Indeed, man. I just want to shout out some people in the chat. I see Young Boy Problem. What up? What up? See him out here. Um, yes. shout, out, shout out to, uh, um, Arsama B, I hope I pronounced that correctly, saying as African people, um, Ubuntu mm -hmm. is a core part of who we are. I am because we are. Community is a huge uh, resource indeed. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, there's nothing more, more um, a, a vibe I get when, when you know, me vendoring at Afrofest, for example, you know I mean? It's a shameless to happen this year. Like, it, it's, it's like church to me, man. You know what I mean? It's a reunion where I just see everybody just glowing in the sun and just a vibe. I just get charged up and that energy like sustains me for the year. <laughs> you know, not even Caravana does does what Afrofest does for me. You know, it's yeah. my vibe, yo. I just soak it all in. I'm just like, oh, hold that tight. Yeah, man. Is there an alternative happening this year? Sorry? Is there an Afrofest alternative happening this year? Something virtual or uh, well, no, you don't yeah, know. I don't, I don't know, man. I'm I'm just waiting to get back into like the physical, you know what I mean? Like like, you know, we, we, we digital right now, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to when we can go back to those spaces, you know, but, yeah, man, community, man, community all the way. It is so important, Logic. Like, I know, like, I'll, I'll feed off of energy, you know right. what I mean? Like, everybody be feeding off of energy. Like, if I'm in a, a room or just, like, talk to people, I'll, I'll feel down or, or tired and want to go to sleep, and I'll call somebody or I'll talk to somebody, and then all of a sudden, like, all that tiredness goes away. Like, I just feel renewed. I start getting happy. Like, I'm like, okay, what's up? I was just going to sleep a minute ago. So, um, community and talk to people really is just something so wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> true indeed, man. True indeed, man. So, I know where we got, we got, like, our, our last question. I don't know if you want to jump into that, uh, Brittany. Or you want, what will we get? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can take it over <laughs> and, and keep on the chat. Um Remember, as Logic said, if you have a question, you know, that's interesting or something, um, feel free to type it and we'll see if we can answer that. Yeah. So, um, so you know, we've been talking a lot about like, like rituals and just kind of like summons in the energy, you know, the ancestors, our future selves, like well, whatever that looks like. So, like, what do you do before you create? Like, can you speak more to like, like the process? Like, is there something that like, you know, you prepare yourself, like, do you sit by like, like, a you know, like on a full moon and, you know, let, let like the, you know, <laughs> you know, what I mean? like, <laughs> you know, what I mean? it's a full moon. It's just like, ah. <laughs> the full moon so only comes moving. once in a while, though. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> What's the process? <laughs> Yeah, man. Get in a prayer warrior stance. Say, what up, yo? Like, no, nah, mine's. I can go first if you don't mind, Anik. Please. 
Uh, for me, it's it's I write down words because, uh, as y'all know, I I started off with spoken word poetry, so uh, I often like okay, so it's a twofold thing, you know what I mean? Because one one part of the inspiration and process is dreaming, you know what I mean? So I I've been trying to sleep more because you know that's that's how the ancestors choose to communicate, you know, and and uh, mm. at least for me, you know. I, everyone's ancestors communicate with them differently, you know? And so for me, they'll show me what I need to create, you know? And sometimes they'll box me out my sleep and say, yeah, why? Get up. You know what I mean? And, and I gotta move. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, in terms of, so that's one process, you know what I mean? Where it's just like, I, I, I like, John, know, like I'll wake up like, like for example, Joshua Glover, the Joshua Glover art piece, took me 30 minutes to make. Man popped up in my sleep. I saw exactly what I had to do. Kate woke up at 4.44, I remember. 4.44. You know what I mean? I woke up at 4.44. Within 30 minutes, it was done. I went Come back on. to sleep. I got back up and I... <laughs> I got back up. I got back up and I doubted myself. Mm. And then I created three more versions of the art piece. And I mm. submitted it. And it's the first art piece. So I made three more versions of the art piece and it took me like hours. I worked on it for hours, like days, like, oh, I'm going in, uh, adding details here, doing all these random things. It's the art piece that took me 30 minutes that they chose. That mm. one and an Sometimes you, know you can't overthink it, man. You can't overthink it. So, but uh, the, the, the main, my main process, though, uh, once I get, a, once I get an uh, inspiration uh, from something, I write down words, you know what I mean? So I write down words and then, then I do research. You know, so um, right now I, I, I call myself an artographer, which is artist, researcher, and teacher, you know, so. And oh so all, these things, all these things, you know, uh, mesh into one because for me, I'm learning from, from, from my research, but also my, my work will also encourage research, you know what I mean? It will encourage, encourage you to learn. And hopefully, you know, you might pick up a book and thing and, may google a one two thing you know that you see in the work you know and so um so for me like writing down words helps me to kind of like get to a place of making sure my work is informed because mm. for me I, I consider myself a teacher first you know and so you know whether i'm teaching myself or i'm trying to teach others you know i'm, I'm constantly trying to make sure my work is as informed as possible like if i recently posted uh some uh, work that i did for Carnegie hall I showed all my references, you know, and I only showed half of my references, you know, I showed 20, 20 references, historical references that I did research on, you know, even though I saw the art piece in my dream, ancestors boxed me up, I saw the art piece, I woke up, made it, but then I made sure I did research, you know, so I wrote, I wrote down the words that came to me um, based on what I saw in the dream, and then I did research around them, and that kind of helped to uh, make the, the art piece uh, holistic in a way, you know, so that's my process. That's beautiful, y'all. Mm -mm. Love that. Um, for me, I think I have in the past spent a lot of time doing a lot of research in my work, which I think is really important. But I found that um, I found that I started to think more heady than visual, and I wanted to. It was that wasn't the muscle I wanted to grow. I wanted to grow a muscle that is um, that is more visual, and so um, so I sort of like oscillate between like spending a lot of time researching beforehand, and and so like I will do that research and like create something that I sort of um, think about in relationship to that, mm. and I also spend a lot of time producing work and then thinking about. Um, like what it's teaching me after it's done, right? So like similar to what he was saying. But for me to be able to do that work that's like visual, that's like um, not necessarily coming from a deep-rooted research in that way, like in that sort of like, um, you know, like paced sort of research way. Like I think that a lot of the ideas come to me are researched, but are not through like an academic sense, right? They They come from conversations, they come from like, um, you know, experiences that I had, questions that I've had my whole life or whatever. And for me to get to, to those types of visual spaces, I, I'm again back to music. Like I spent a lot of time listening to music, dancing, um, like being by myself, really it's just like 
taking in and in a real intuitive way what it is that I want to feel with the work that I'm creating. Because more than anything, even more than what it is doing, like in a, um, in like a, you know, maybe like in relationship to an archive or a historical moment or a contemporary moment, or whatever, more than all that stuff, I want it to, I want people to feel something when they see the work. And so and for me, I need to feel that when I'm making it in order for that to be translated. So I spent a lot of time trying to understand what it is that I feel about what I'm trying to do. And I just, I spend time with music and in an empty space and like dancing. <laughs> and then I Crazy. try a thing. <laughs> it's basically yeah, what happens. Yeah. Honestly, like seeing Anik dance and her full joy is like the most happiest thing ever because she's so carefree. Like she's like, <laughs> it's just so blessed. Like she doesn't care. She doesn't care. Like carefree synonymous with something. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry so if I'm outing you. <laughs> the other day I was talking to a friend, I was like, do you guys still know how to dance? Because I don't know what's happening out there. <laughs> like, pandemic has like quieted a few skills. <laughs> uh, yeah. well, one thing, one thing I, I, uh, that Anika reminded me of was uh, conversations. You know, um, mm -hmm. for me, conversation is super important. Uh, there's often three conversations that I try to always have. Uh, in my, in my, in all like now, in all my current uh, artistic practices, conversation with my future self, mm. uh, a conversation with an elder, mm. you know, or if I'm if I'm making an art piece of someone, I try to have that conversation with that person or someone who's connected to that person, and then uh, the last one is of course a uh, conversation with my ancestors, you know, um, mm. just to make sure like what I'm putting out into the world is what is meant to be put out into the world. You know, and not what I'm trying to force into the world, you know, um, and it's not coming from a place of ego, you know, and so it's like having that conversation to be like, yo, is this right? Is this correct? And asking questions, you know, so a lot of the research is to be able to ask those questions and come from an informed place. So it's like if I'm going to incorporate. Uh, so for me, like I'm of Away descent. So if I'm going to incorporate things of Away culture, like I need to talk to an elder, you know, what I mean, I'm like, yo, am I following right protocol? Am I representing? The culture correctly you know what i mean even though i'm not directly off that this like you know what i mean uh directly living in that culture like how how can i honor that you know what i mean how can i how can i represent that properly and then speaking to my future self to be like you know because self-doubt is real you know what i mean the imposter syndrome is real it's a real thing you know what i mean so it's like i might i might put myself in a position that i will feel compromised or not you know and so it's important to to kind of see that future vision of what you want um, out of that uh, creative uh, thing that you're creating, you know, mm -hmm. and having that t conversation with your future self kind of gives you that that prep talk, you know, of like, okay, yo, this yo. is what you need to do. Humble yourself and go on through with the thing. Yo, that's that's super powerful, yo. Like, you know, like the way how you articulate, like I'm I'm just like visualizing it in my head, like you know, speaking to my future self and and how that just really, you know, aligns with just like intention and like authenticity and, and to really, you know, kind of like channel your energy like appropriate as, as opposed to just kind of like guessing and just, you know, to see where things land, you know, it's like, no, you're actually like visualizing, like you're, you see it, you know, oftentimes like we speak of <clears throat> speaking to like our past self, you know, like what would you have told yourself back then and whatnot, but like the way how you articulate it, you know, that that's, that, that's powerful. But just like, just to add on to that, like, what is something you would tell your past self now, now that we're here in the present? Hmm. So it's funny that you said that because uh, I have a term called Sankofanology. Come on now. From, from the elders uh, in Ghana, which talks about the connection of time. Yes. So really and truly, when I'm talking to my future self, I'm also talking to my past self, right? Mm. Because my future self is talking to the self in the past, right? <laughs> so it's, it's an ongoing cycle, right? So if you think of the internet, let's say, and you, if you if you want, you can try this. Send yourself a message on WhatsApp. You're you're literally speaking to yourself. You know what I mean? So it's like you're speaking to your future self because you're. Uh, let me not go into that quantum, quantum. <laughs> but like, because just the idea, like the internet has no time, right? And so your spirit works the same way. The ancestral realm works in the same way. So, um, uh, you know, the main thing is usually patience and humble yourself. You know. And uh, mm. it's okay not to know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Powerful, powerful, yo. Um, Anik, like, what, what would you say to your past self? Like, what, 
what, what thoughts come up? Um, something that I learned recent, or two things that I learned recently. One is that life is long. And I think we're told all the time that life is short. Mm. And I'm like, no, life is actually long. <laughs> and I love that because that creates that like, like opens a space of so many possibilities when you're not thinking that, you know, this is going to end. This is like, you know, you, it allows you to sort of like stretch further uh. for me. So that's one thing. And the other thing um, is that people can be wrong. People can be wrong about you. They can be wrong about themselves. And it's okay for that to happen. <laughs> Just because somebody says something doesn't mean that it has to be true or that it has to be right. And if I knew that when I was younger, I think I would have, my decisions might have been a little bit more bold. So um, that's yeah. something. A lot of people to be wrong. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay for yourself to be wrong too. You know? Mm-hmm. Well, but we're people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's 100%. Yeah. That's peace, man. Yo, I mean, that pretty much comes to, like, the conclusion of our, of our evening today, man. Big up to everyone who passed through, man. We're talking about, you know, like, art, talking about healing, um, referencing, like, certain certain books, you know, that have, have kept us, you know, um, kept us whole and, and who have opened portals for us to understand ourselves and, and be connected in, in, multi, in multiple ways. You know, um, this was like an incredible, rich um, conversation. And I'm so glad that we'll have this on our IG for people to check out later. Um, you know, like this, I feel like this, this whole session could be like a course, you know what I mean? Like I know I'm gonna be referencing it in, in some of my, my youth groups and whatnot. So y'all just um, definitely like blessed us. Um, I'm so happy. I'm always blessed to share space with, with both of you. Um, both of you are, are, are people that I look up to and I'm always inspired by like, you know, like I find like oftentimes I'm in spaces where I'm always talking, but like when, when the two of you together, I'm just like, yo, let me just fall back, yo. Let me just, you know what I'm let, me just let me just take this in. <laughs> trying to get all the blessings, you feel me? So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, like you said, man, anybody in the chat, man, if you have any like questions, you know, real quick before we sign off, man, like any any comments, questions, if you share if you're feeling the vibe, man, drop some hearts, drop some fire emojis, drop something. <laughs> let us know what's up. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But it's been all love, man. Um, I, I don't Actually, know. Brittany. I'm curious to know from Anique, like, what book would you recommend for people to start with? Oh, to start with? Maybe The Future, Octavia Butler's. Mm. And then work backwards. Or not. Yeah, actually, yeah, you could think about that in that way. What would you recommend, Q? Oh, yeah, that's the exact same thing. Mm. Octavia <laughs> Butler all the way. <laughs> actually i do want to share a quote from tenacity's quotes uh book he goes you are growing into consciousness and my wish for you is that you feel no need to constrict yourself to make other people comfortable and i hope that everyone uh who watches this live and listens to anik wisdom and see her glowing skin and, and uh, <laughs> Continue to support SFA. You know, I hope y'all continue to not constrict yourself to make other people yeah. feel comfortable. Can Can you read that quote again, but like slowly, like like say like a true poet, like you know what I mean, with the with the pauses in between the words, and <laughs> so we can really get those downloads. You feel me, like like yes. yo, I, 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 I want to that, that prayer warrior. You feel me? Like, <laughs> right, so uh, you are growing into consciousness. And my wish for you is that you feel no need to constrict yourself to make other people comfortable. Ashe. Yes. Like Amazing that, takeaway yeah. to end on. I feel like yeah. that message was for me, yo, like straight up, like that, yo. That's, that's powerful mm. right there, man. Mm. That's the message I, I send to myself, to my future self, to my past self, mm. like all of it, man. <laughs> Yo, that's same awesome. Thank you both for having us for this space. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you guys for coming and sharing your knowledge. As Logic said, um, I've learned a lot today, um, especially these, you know, I have access to these amazing books now. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and hit us up whenever you want. That's it, man. Yeah. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. So that's Sorry, it, man. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. We're going to be signing off. We'll put, like, you know, links 
in, in the chat so you can keep in contact with, with Anik and Q and, and, you know, follow them around. <laughs> See what they're up to, man, because I know they're always doing something, something crazy. You know, shout out to Dre, man. You know, that's a big homie right there. You know what I'm saying? Family Ting, man. You already know, man. You already know. Yes, man. Good <laughs> everyone. Big up, big up. Um, and I know um, Q wanted to say something at oh, the end. Oh, no. I, I was going to I was gonna oh, ask okay. Anik to plug, uh, plug her, like, working folks. Follow her stuff, like you know what I mean? Plug the stuff. Oh yes, there. please go ahead. Do I have something to plug? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you have my IG. You can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> put, put your number in the chat, your address, like oh, your no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're cool, we're cool. You can follow me on IG though. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, like I said, like um, when this gets reposted, I'll I'll have some 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 links. You know, what I mean, I'm gonna do a quick Google search. I'm gonna find some stuff. Don't worry, y'all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Until next time, man. We out, man. Stone from Africa. All right, peace. You're, you're As not to say. That's right, man. Peace, man. Until next time, we out. Thank you. Big up. Big Bye. Up.